All right, you guys, welcome to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Eddie Watson. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. If not, welcome back. I created this channel with the hopes of bringing you some of the best in-depth, free, online critical care educational topics out there. And I cover many different topics, so if you don't want to miss out on any future lessons that I put out, make sure and subscribe to the channel down below. Make sure though you hit that bell icon and select all notifications, that way you're never going to miss out when a new video is released. All right, so in this lesson we're going to take a look at some of the added complexity to our ECMO cannula configurations. This lesson is really building upon the last two lessons that I did. The first one really just talking about what ECMO is, and then that second more in-depth episode where we talked about the differences between VV and VA ECMO. And as discussed in that last lesson, the primary decision to be made about the type of ECMO that we're going to use, uh, also known as our cannula configuration, is pretty straightforward decision. We either offer VV ECMO for respiratory support or VA ECMO for cardiac support. Sometimes, though, there are complexities in our patient's condition and underlying disorder that really requires more than just the typical cannula configuration, and thus uh, requires a change in our support strategy. The support we provide to them is not always a fixed strategy, and it may require modifications to the configuration that we have running. And really, in our most basic sense, we can think of these hybrid ECMO strategy configurations as sort of upgrades to the support that we can provide. Now, ELSO, which is the ECMO Life Support Organization, officially recognizes these configurations in their guidelines that they provide for ECMO care. That said, though, it's important to note that these hybrid strategies only make up about 2% of all the ECMO runs that happen out there, both for respiratory and cardiac support combined. So these really aren't configurations that you're going to see very often, but if you do, it's going to be really helpful to you to have an understanding of sort of the what and the, the why behind what's actually happening here. And that's the whole point of this lesson here is to, to give you guys that foundational knowledge to, to really understand what's going on with these hybrid configurations. All right, so if we talk about the, the different hybrid ECMO strategies that we have available to us, there's really three primary strategies or cannula configurations that we can talk about. And this is something that we refer to as triple cannulation. Now, of these three strategies, two are really similar in the desired effect that they have, and I'm, I'm going to group them together for the, the sake of this discussion. And so thus, we really can think of these as being two primary types of hybrid strategies. These two primary types are going to be our VVV or VVA ECMO and something else that we call VAV ECMO. Now VV ECMO stands for Veno Veno Venus and VVA ECMO stands for Veno Veno Arterial and our VAV ECMO stands for Veno Arterial Venus. So you can see as it's really been discussed in those past lessons that the letters just represent where the cannulas are aka are they in a vein or are they in an artery. Now we will have a mix of drainage and return lines and their location will have completely different impacts on the type of hybrid support that we can offer. So I know at this point I've thrown a lot of letters and a lot of terminology at you and it probably isn't really making a whole lot of sense so let's go a little bit deeper in here and let's start with our VVV and VVA ECMO. Now these two are completely different in the type of support that we're offering for our patient. VVV is going to be our respiratory support and VVA is still going to be our cardiac support. But what they have in common is that both of these configurations consist of adding a second drainage cannula into a vein to aid in increasing ECMO flow. And both consist of two drainage lines and one return line. And one of the reasons we might do this is if we have flows that are being restricted by our blood flow resistance, so this could be a result of cannula size or the patient's vessel size. Well, in the case of a, a cannula size, we could change out the, the cannula to a larger one, but this is really a pretty difficult thing to do. And more easily, we can just insert another cannula into another location to aid in drainage. So by adding this additional drainage cannula, this is going to allow us to achieve higher flows than we could before. And then in turn, this is thus going to provide more support by being able to provide more oxygenated blood to our patient. And so typically to get to VVV ECMO, 
we're going to transition from VV ECMO to VVV. And so hopefully this kind of makes sense on why I was saying this was our respiratory support because VV ECMO is just that, it's our respiratory support. And by adding another drainage cannula, we're just going to allow greater flow still in the, the configuration to provide respiratory support. Now, another reason we might also do this in addition to increasing flows is if we're having recirculation problem. And this is something that you know, we can see if we're having higher flows with that two cannula configuration. And this is something that I talked about in that last lesson on, on VV versus VA ECMO. And so typically we would try things like turning down our flows to help with the recirculation. But if the patient either isn't tolerating that, or if we've tried other things like possibly repositioning the cannulas in better spots, if we've done that and we're still having significant recirculation, then another option that we have is to insert another drainage cannula in a different location. And this can help reduce the amount of recirculation as well as really the impact of that recirculation. And so to help explain this and to help you guys visualize this a little bit better, let's go ahead and draw a situation here where we have a patient who's on VV ECMO. So in this case, let's say we're draining blood via the femoral vein and then returning that oxygenated blood to the right IJ. And so we know that that return cannula is gonna be sitting in that right atrium and the drainage cannula is gonna be sitting anywhere from the level of the renal arteries right up to the, the border of the right atrium. And so you can see here if we're running a lot of flow or we're having vessel diameter issues with our patients or, or other factors that, that could be at play here, you could see how some of that return blood might make its way past the right atrium and get drawn up into that drainage cannula. So in the case of VVV ECMO, when we add a second drainage cannula, in this example, we'd add it to the patient's left femoral vein. And from there, we'll drain blood out and it will Y connect in with the other drainage cannula going back to the circuit. And so you can see here that uh, immediately we're going to have half our flow coming from another drainage cannula that is completely removed from where that return cannula is. In addition to that, the blood that's coming in through that that first initial cannula is gonna have less blood flowing through it than it did before. And so that's gonna decrease that chance of recirculation happening there between those first two cannulas. So let's go ahead and clear that off of here. And now let's talk about our conversion going from VA ECMO to VVA ECMO. Now for VA ECMO, remember that part of our goal here is to offload the heart by taking away that preload into the circuit. But sometimes what we'll find with patients running on VA ECMO is that the offloading just isn't enough. And again, this can be, you know, due to the cannula size compared to the patient size, uh, vasculature size, whatever the reason is, the heart is going to continue to pump blood forward if we're not offloading it enough. So now again, let me draw our configuration here. And in this example, we're going to have the drainage cannula in the patient's right femoral vein draining back to the circuit. And we're going to be returning the oxygenated blood back through our patient's left femoral artery. Now, if our drainage problem here is causing flow problems and we're just not able to achieve adequate flow, that could be a problem because our patient's perfusion is going to be dependent on the flow of our ECMO machine. So then what we might do is insert a second drainage cannula. This case, let's say in the patient's right IJ, again, wide back in with the drainage cannula coming from the patient's right femoral vein. And this could give us enough of the drainage that we need to have the proper flow in order to have that proper perfusion. Now, if we have the problem where we don't have enough offloading of the patient's heart and the heart's continuing to pump blood forward, this won't be a problem as long as the patient's lungs continue to work. But if we're starting to see decreasing respiratory function and we're not offloading the heart enough, we're going to begin to see that north-south syndrome that I talked about from the last lesson. And if you remember, the, the north-south syndrome is where you have that deoxygenated blood coming from the patient's heart and it's meeting with the retrograde flow from the ECMO circuit. And somewhere it forms this mixing cloud. And if that mixing cloud moves far enough along the aorta, we put the perfusion of the heart at risk, the upper body, as well as the head. And so by adding that second drainage cannula, we're able to achieve higher flows, and this is going to lead to more offloading of the heart by decreasing that preload even more. And the goal here is to prevent the heart from pumping less oxygenated blood, which then goes on to perfuse, like I said, the upper body, the coronaries, as well as the head. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. We're either on VV ECMO or we're on VA ECMO. 
and for different reasons, we might need to add that second drainage cannula in order to help achieve better flows with our circuit. So now let's move on and talk about VAV ECMO. While it looks pretty similar in the, the letters, this is actually quite a bit different than both of the, the two previous examples. For VAV ECMO, again we have three cannulas, but in this case we're only going to have one drainage cannula and now two return cannulas. Now, depending on the initial configuration that we had our ECMO in, we're going to be adding additional support for either respiratory or cardiac failure by adding this extra return cannula. So first, let's talk about the situation where we start on VV ECMO, and then we go to VAV ECMO. So here again, let's draw our setup for VV ECMO. We have the drainage cannula coming from the patient's right femoral vein and the return cannula going in our patient's right IJ. So here these patients began on VV ECMO, so this was for respiratory support. And then what happens is they develop some sort of heart failure. So this could be LV failure, RV failure, or even biventricular failure. And particularly RV failure is not that uncommon with patients who are in severe ARDS, which would be one reason we'd be on ECMO. And so what happens is when these patients go into this heart failure, we need to add the arterial return cannula. And this is so that we can aid in their perfusion, but also offload their heart. And so what we're going to do is we're going to divide this return line so that we have some of it still going back to our patient's right IJ. But in this example here, we'll have the additional return line going back to this patient's left femoral artery. And so by doing this, what we're essentially doing is we're adding the cardiac support to the respiratory support that was already being provided. And so that's going to be different than the next scenario that we talk about here. And that's going to be where our patient starts on VA ECMO and transitions to VAV ECMO. And so here we know that VA ECMO is our cardiac support. And let's go ahead and draw our configuration here. Let's say we have a bifem cannulation for this patient. So we have our drainage cannula in the patient's left femoral vein. And then we're returning the oxygenated blood via our patient's right femoral artery. And so as we talked about just a little bit ago, if a patient's respiratory system is failing, that this can lead to that north-south syndrome. And this then leads to the perfusion of deoxygenated blood to the patient's upper body, heart, and head. So now dependent on the extent of the respiratory failure, as well as the flows that we're able to achieve from just that one drainage cannula, it may be necessary to divert some of that oxygenated blood back to the right atrium and then thus the pulmonary circulation, increasing the oxygen supply to the upper body, head, and heart. And so again, here in our example, we would then Y off our return line, sending that oxygenated blood back via our patient's right IJ into the right atrium. And so here, by adding the second return cannula, we're essentially adding the respiratory support to the cardiac support that they already had. And so despite our different starting point, we end up in the same point with these. We end up with both respiratory and cardiac support, just the difference is which one came before the other. So you can see that VAV is definitely more complex because we're providing two different types of support here. And so because of that, there's actually some pathophysiology considerations that we really need to understand. So there's really this complex relationship that exists in VAV ECMO between each of the return lines. And what I mean by this is, depending on how much flow is going to each of the return lines, that this is going to have an impact on preload, afterload, and the potential location of the blood mixing and the north-south syndrome. And with VAV, typically our respiratory support is going to be pretty strong with this configuration, but the cardiac support, if you think about it, is sometimes cut in half with this. And so sometimes what we'll do is we'll have some sort of flow limiting device on each of those return lines. And it's going to be really important that we have careful monitoring of our patient's hemodynamics with an echo. And then from there, we want to have precise management of the flow to each of those return lines. So definitely some extra considerations that we have to take into account when we have patients on VAV ECMO, because a lot of things are going to be dependent on how much flow we have, either going back before the heart or going back after the heart. All right, so I just wanted to bring up, and I'll kind of leave this sitting up here, this comparison between the different major types of ECMO, from our simple VV and VA to our more complicated VVV, VVA, and finally VAV. 
And so as I talked about with all of these, the cannulas are gonna be some mix of drainage and return lines. To really kind of help understand the nomenclature and kind of wrap your head around it, one way to kind of help and think about this is if there's no A in the name that we're talking about, so VV or VVV, we know that the last V represents the return line. So in VV ECMO, we have drainage and vein, return and vein. In VVV ECMO, we have drainage and vein, drainage and vein, return and vein. So that last V is going to represent the return line. Where it gets a little tricky though is if we have an A in there, the A is always our return. And so thus then we know everything from the A and after is going to be a return line and anything prior to the A is going to be a drainage line. So in VA, pretty simple, drain vein, return artery. In VVA, the V is before the A, so we have drain vein, drain vein, return artery. But in VAV, because the V is after the A, we know that it's a return line, so we're draining from vein, returning artery, returning vein. So hopefully this helps to kind of visualize everything side by side and kind of see some of the, the differences between these different configurations. Now, even beyond this discussion, there's even more configurations, believe it or not, both with either additional cannulas or even different dual lumen cannulas, such as the Tandem Life Protect Duo. So while these can add more complexity, understanding the, the concepts that I talked about in this lesson here and really how these configurations differ from one another are going to allow you to be able to think about through any new situation that you find and really be able to understand what's happening. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this lesson, please leave it a like as it helps YouTube know to, to show this to even more people. I also really enjoy all the comments that you guys leave and I, I try to respond to every one of them. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to always catch the latest videos as I release them every single week. And if you wanna learn more about this topic or really any other topics related to critical care, then head down into the video description and I have links to some of my favorite books on the subject of critical care that you guys might find useful. Finally, a shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon channel members. Your support means the world to me and a big thank you to you guys. Now, if you'd be interested in additional support for this channel and along with that want to get extra content that only the members receive, then either join the channel membership down below right next to the subscribe button or head on over to the Patreon page to check out some of the ways in which you can show additional support. Don't worry if you don't though because your support in watching these videos and sharing them is, is greatly appreciated as well. Until I see you guys for the next lesson, here's a couple of other really great videos to check out. You guys have a great day.